The last time we caught up, I had just finished knitting two vintage sweaters while doing a cross-country 3,000 mile move. It was incredibly stressful, but it also presented a unique opportunity where once we arrived to our new place, I realized I had to go through my entire yarn stash in order to organize it properly, as well as think about setting up a room that is fully de dedicated to my crafts. There's a lot that went into both of those, so I will just focus on organizing my yarn stash in today's video. So let's take it back in time to a few weeks ago when we had just moved my many boxes of things into my new craft room. So we got the keys to this place, I think it's four days ago now. While some of the apartment is already set up, I haven't at all touched my craft room, which is the absolute mess that you can see behind me. <laughs> I am in love with this new space. I have a wonderfully sized room. It's even bigger than the room that I was sharing previously. I have my own private balcony slash patio where I have so many plans for growing fiber related things. So I'll keep you all posted with that as I make progress, hopefully, <laughs> and don't kill my plants. I have a wonderful walk-in closet for some storage, and I have so many ideas on how I am going to design and put together and organize this space to make it as functional as possible for all the different kind of crafts and things that I like to do. I do kind of need to start somewhere because this space is just filled to the brim with stuff. So I think today I'm gonna focus on unpacking all these boxes and going through my yarn stash. Organize it and kind of think through the projects that I want to do with all the yarn. I'm taking some inspiration from Claude of Retro Cloud, who also recently went through her entire yarn stash. I want to do something very similar for my yarn stash. Honestly, <laughs> I used my yarn as like padding in my boxes, so I just threw it in various boxes. So I have to unpack everything just to get to the yarn stash. So that'll be, I think, a good place to start. <laughs> all of my cardboard boxes and put things generally kind of in new places. I definitely put all the yarn or in progress knitting projects together. You tell come on in. Okay, hold on. You wanted to be part of the conversation, come on up. <laughs> Can I put you on the desk while I talk to my friends? Yeah, come on up. Oh, that's, that's my cheese snacks for later. So I don't know that my room necessarily looks uh, any better than it did before, but at least now I have a little bit better idea of all of my stuff. I mean, I knew what my stuff was, but now I know where it is. Like I had some surprises in those boxes. I thought I did a pretty good job labeling everything, but it turns out I did not. Oh, Nutella, thank you for that. That lovely angle. Not everyone thinks that's your best angle though, although I would disagree. So I, now have two bins of yarn. I'm not 100% confident that that's all of my yarn. Uh, I haven't unpacked all of the boxes in the rest of the apartment, so there might still be some yarn hiding out there, and it's time to sort through them. So I think I'm gonna do three categories. The first is going to be yarns with either an in-progress project or a pattern, like a dedicated pattern that I have for it. And I can tell you about those as I go through them. The second one is going to be sock yarns. I have so much sock yarn, but I do not really hand knit a lot of socks because it's very intricate work and I try to save the intricate work and my hands for vintage pieces. However, I do have my circular sock machine, my CSM, so I'd love to separate out the sock yarn for using on my CSM. And then the last category of yarn will be the yarns that I have, and maybe at one point I had a project for them, but I forgot what it was and or I don't want to make that project anymore and I'm going to put that into my Ravelry stash to then better be able to organize and think about what projects I can do with those in the future. Nutella, I will be needing to use this workspace though, so you might have to scooch over just a tiny bit while I sort through my yarns. Is that okay? Okay, 
Hey, I am checking in after the first and thankfully larger of the two bins has been gone through and I knew I had a lot of projects in progress, but oh my gosh, the amount of projects I have started and not finished is a lot. So let me work you through those first. Oh, this one actually, I'm very excited for this one. So I have some Simply Wool Twist in bulky weight and it's this lovely, I don't, it's not heathered. I don't know what to call it, but like each individual ply is a different color and they're applied together. And I basically bought it in this wonderful gradient from uh, lighter colors to a darker color and I was gonna make a, I believe it's called the Fireside Cardigan. I have adored cardigans in that style, at that collar style, especially for the longest time. I just felt like this is the perfect matchup of pattern and yarn. So I should probably also label this as the Fireside Cardigan. My next one is a super fun project that there will be a video out about this one. So I'm not going to say too much except for that it's a vintage sweater made for another costuming friend of mine and you'll see her enjoying this sweater at some point in the future. But yeah, it's a 1930s knit and you will see more about this in an upcoming video. Next I have a project, oh my gosh, this project has been on my I've started it and not yet finished it pile for so so long. I literally have done like three rows and it is a hat kit for my mom. I promised her I'd make this like years ago and I just, I'm sorry mom, <laughs> I'm gonna work on it though. Now it's fully sorted out and ready to go. I have all the yarn, I have the pattern. I just need to get knitting. Oh, this is another one. This one is a tunic. It's made out of city tweed in Aran weight. I absolutely love it. So I, I don't know if it's, possible for you to see. Here we go. So the whole body is done. So the back is longer than the front. All I have left is to make the ribbing for the neck and the armholes and I'm nearly done with the neck. I just haven't picked it up yet. My mom and I are actually working on matching ones and both of us kind of ran out of steam at nearly the same point. It was a very interesting construction. We both enjoyed working on it and then just never got around to finishing it. So maybe I can bring this next time I'm meeting up with my mom and we can work on both of ours together. These next two projects are ones that are for this fall specifically. They're going to be two fall inspired vintage sweaters. I'm so excited for them. So neither of them I'm really going to tell you exactly what I'm planning to do because there will like, once again be a video out but just get the idea about it is this first one is going to be a mostly black with hints of white 1950s vintage sweater pattern and it's a fully vintage sweater pattern. I'm just inverting the colors. This next set of yarn is oh my gosh one of my most recent yarn acquisitions. It's from a hand dyer whose name is Essence of Autumn. The perfect name, I think, for a yarn company and especially for a yarn company that makes a color called Maple Leaf in this beautiful range of autumn colors. The oranges, the yellows, the greens and browns is exactly what I was looking for. And I am looking to make a vintage sweater. <laughs> trying to eat my cheese again. <laughs> and it will be similar to a sweater I've already knit and I am going to just be changing the design a little bit to make it a little bit more fall inspired and to use kind of this beautiful hand dyed fall yarn. I have this last in process project in progress, in process, same difference I guess, and that is my 1890s biking ensemble. For those of you who have been around for a while, you might know that mm, maybe it's over a year ago now, I started a project to work on an 1890s biking ensemble that is entirely knit because I found a knitting pattern book that had basically every piece you would need to wear with knit items, which I loved. I have been steadily working on the sweater portion. I have been steadily working on the bloomer portion. The only problem is, is I ran out of hand dyed yarn and I, this is yarn I dyed myself. I have been trying to get more of the bare yarn to be able to dye it as closely as possible to the yarn that I dyed like over a year ago now. But because of the move <laughs> and some issues with my last apartment's mail room, I have not received any, like I have been trying, it's not on the yarn company's fault, it's just because of my move and because of where I was living before the package room. I'm going to continue working on it as soon as I can get more yarn dyed. This last one is a project that has been in process for, oh, like I think I started this last summer. It's supposed to be a lightweight cardigan and I liked the design and the pattern when I saw it, but for whatever reason, I just 
didn't want to pick it up again so I would rather not continue working on this so this is one of the ones where I might add this back to my stash so that I have it uh, in my like arsenal of yarns when I'm considering new projects to unravel this and knit it up into something that I will both enjoy knitting and enjoy wearing. There are a few other miscellaneous things that I also found as part of this. So we have a whole bunch of this crochet cotton, cotton that I use to do all of my antique projects with like uh, tatting or <laughs> Irish crochet, different crochet projects. I have a lot of different sizes on hand and I'm just gonna keep them out invisible. I don't think I necessarily need to stash them. The next bit is I found years ago, year, I don't, I cannot even tell you how many years ago, but it's years ago at this point. I attempted spinning on a drop spindle and this is my first ever yarn I created myself. It is both over twisted and under twisted in different portions. Too thin and too thick. The drafting was very difficult for me, but I kind of love it and I think I'm gonna keep it. I have a feeling that you all are gonna see a lot more of me spinning in the semi near future. So I have this all as roving to spin up as well as plenty of these three colors, which are just, oh, to me, these are just like cozy, comfy fall, vibrant, wonderfully delicious colors. I'm very excited to learn some spinning and learn how to spin. I, uh, yeah, I have some more exciting things planned for that. So once again, if you want to stick around, we got some other crafts coming. These, which are my yarn cones. Um, I did use this for one of my vintage sweaters, but it is technically a weaving alpaca yarn. And then these two yarns are also for weaving. So these weaving cones are gonna go to my weaving yarn stash, which is separate from my knitting yarn stash. I mean, I, they are kind of interchangeable, but I buy them in different thicknesses and strengths for weaving than I do typically for knitting. So I'd rather keep those separated and I won't add them to my Ravelry stash. Then so far in this box, is where I've been keeping the sock yarns I found and these are the only ones I found so I can 100% guarantee you that there are more of these sock yarns hiding somewhere that I haven't found yet so I am missing some sock yarns I think I'm gonna have to unpack some other boxes throughout the apartment to find the rest that's all I have for the moment but that's definitely going to grow with time trust me and then I added another category so those are kind of like the three well actually the other one that we talked about in the past basically my stash so I have currently oh these are overflowing I'll just pick up one so I have two of these right now of yarns that I have a good amount of or like whole skeins of but I don't have a project associated with them and some of them I'm like I know I bought this for a reason but I never marked down what project and I, I can't remember for the life of me looking through my favorites and there nothing is matching up so I just added them all to my stash and it'll serve as like my source for future projects to come. I have two of those so far <laughs> full. And then the last category I created is like my odds and ends. So this is not quite enough yarn to knit something with, or I don't have enough information about the yarn. And it's not something I would typically knit a garment with like this one. And then just a whole bunch of like scraps and ends, like the little bits. And this is basically for my scrappy projects. Two ways I'm planning on using up my scraps. One is using this Zoom Loom, which is like a little tiny pin weaving loom that I love so much. I have already made a few squares. Can I find them? Somewhere in here. Yep, see, I've made a few squares from some of my other <laughs> bits and pieces of yarn. So that's one way I'm going to use them up. And the other way that I'd like to use up some of these scraps or bits of yarn that I'm not planning, like I don't see myself using for any knitting or weaving projects, is making a hexi puff blanket <laughs> and I can't help but smile. I, I have known about the hexi puff blanket for the longest time, but I, I've always wanted one, but it always felt so out of my reach because like I said, it's um, to make the hexies, Claude actually figured this out in, um, I learned it in one of her knitting podcasts. It's basically just knitting a heel and a toe of a sock, but doing that kind of intricate work is a little bit tough on my hands and wrists However, now that I have the CSM and I can, you can knit full socks, including the heels and toes on a CSM, my thought is, can I try to make a hexi puff blanket using a CSM and therefore saving my hands and wrists and making it at least seem a little bit more feasible to do that. So that's our current status. <laughs> let me go through the second basket of the yarns and let me go through that right now. 
look what I just managed to find. It's a whole nother half uh, bin full of yarns, including so much of the sock yarn, so I'm pretty sure that this is the last of it. So I am going to go through this stash and sort it, and then I will see you again when I organize this. So I have the sorted yarns here, my sorted projects there, my unsorted stash there, and I'm going to finish the sorting and then we're gonna put everything away into that closet. It's been a few days since I've organized the yarn stash and I've been working on the rest of my room, which means that the closet has become full of stuff. In order to put my yarn away, and I wanna put it away in this bookshelf here, I first, I think, need to organize the rest of this closet and then I can put the yarn away. So. I guess we're going to switch to yet another time-lapse time where I'm going to clear out the closet and uh, then I can show you how I'm going to put my yarn back into my bookshelves here and I can really have such a good time accessing all of my stuff once again. <laughs> So I think I am not going to focus on the rest of the closet space today. I'm just going to worry about my yarn. And in my last place, I needed these six cubbies for my yarn. So I kind of cleared out the space. I added more door storage like I had last time too. I have six empty cubbies and I will worry about that mess in the next video. <laughs> so for now, what I'm going to do is I bought foam pasteboard that I'm gonna to cut to size to make the X's again to fill all these cubbies spaces and then I am going to put my yarn in there. So I've shown how to make these X inserts once before the last time I organized my office place slash craft room but just as a quick brief overview you want to make two boards in roughly this shape. Uh, the measurements will be determined by the size of your cubby holes then you want to add a slit halfway through on each one of them and then your lovely boards will just slide together like that and you can take this and slide it into your cubby hole and have the wonderful X dividers for your yarn. my yarn is organized and back in its place and where it should be, although this entire room is by no means organized, not even the closet. You saw that there's still a pile of just fabric on the floor. So if you wanna see how I kinda of set up the rest of my room and I organize that, if you find it satisfying to watch someone else organize like I do, feel free to subscribe because that video will be coming up very shortly. Thank you again so much for watching and I will see you all again very, very soon. And I think also Nutella wants to say goodbye, right, Nutters? Thank you so much for joining. See you next time. Bye. <laughs>